Go in, Salim. Okay. How's that, um, the volume? Uh, if I speak like this, is that loud enough? Everyone happy? Yes, can everybody hear me comfortably? Yeah? Or do I need to speak a little bit more, a little bit more volume? I'm just turning you up a bit for me. Yeah, there we are. Okay. Okay, we'll try yeah, that. Yeah. But yeah. Please stop me if there's any sort of problem. Just to put this in context, this is the third session of three. Um, and the first one, we looked at a particular community in North Wales, um, made a sort of a case study of it. And the point of it was to abstract from it um, ideas that apply generally to communities in Wales, but across the world, really. And we summed it up the sort of abstraction from that case study with three words that um, integrated, that is, to make sense of community, we need to look in an integrated way, the relationship between environment, economy, society, culture, all these things are interrelated, integrated. The second word was eclectic, or if you prefer, holistic, um, that is, to make sense of a community, you need to see it in the round, to see its history, to see its present, to understand uh, the potential for the future. Um, and the third word, which is a little bit more um, challenging, is dialectical. And that has several sort of meanings. People who have studied philosophy, oh, I'm sorry, I, I'm not in a position to, to actually switch these things off. I mean, um, It's all going well. Can't be taken. Uh, <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry about that. I, um, I was just explaining to James before we started. We were literally struck by lightning <laughs> yesterday. Uh, so the, my internet at home is off, and still off. So I've had to move to company for all office, but to an office I had not used that before. And uh, when that phone rang, I had no idea um, how to switch the damn thing off. Uh, and I was scared of switching anything off in case I also switched this off. Um, oh, no. <laughs> it's, it's all that, isn't it? Do you want to answer? I'll just pause the recording. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, this is a third of uh, three sessions. The first session, three words, uh, integrated, eclectic, and dialectical. Dialectical is uh, quite a complex word, but a uh, concept. But for our purposes, it's, there are two things I think we need to um, concentrate on. That, um, that our history is always debatable. That, that there's no sort of simple answer to everything that we a debate. Um, but uh, beware of anybody that tells you um, this is the story. Um, mm. There's always uh, different sides to it. And the other aspect of dialectical is that it tends to look at our story, the story of a community, in terms of the things that are in conflict, the things that are in tension. And you can look negatively, negatively at that tension, but you can also look at it positively. Out of that tension, quite often, you get change, and that change can be positive, constructive. Um, in a way, that's up to us uh, in the field of community development to intervene in a way which turns that conflict into a positive thing. So that was the first session. The second session, we looked at changes in the relationship between capital, state, and community. Um, you think of the state mainly as government, but it's a bit wider than government, the whole um, apparatus of the state. But in a way, we looked at that um, mainly in the context of the history of Wales. And really what we learned from it was that um, this is always a changing relationship. And it, almost you can envisage it today as a triangle. And in one point of the triangle would be uh, government. Another point would be uh, capital, I think usually big capital, 
a big component. And the other point of the triangle is the community. Uh, and those three are in tension. Um, and in a way, uh, part of the sort of message of these three sessions is if the community um, becomes organized, um, then it has more power and then it can influence government and pull government towards community. Whereas capital is so well organized, lobbies so well has a huge influence on government. We need maybe to counter that. that. Um, so, and we also in session two, we touched on the whole ideas of the foundation economy, what the foundation economy is, and we moved to a relatively new idea of uh, the foundation community. Um, and I'll come back to that idea towards the end of this session today. In this third session today, we, there are three elements to it, and that's reflected in the material I've sent out. Um, the first element is to explore the meanings of community, and I don't want to spend an age on that because a lot of curriculum courses tend to do that. Um, but we need some sort of explanation of the meaning of community, but we're doing it in a particular way. We need to also understand a little bit of what community development is, um, and the various meanings of it. So that's the first part. The second part, we'll look at some of the principles and values of community development. Um, and uh, those are quite straightforward in a way, but we need to cover them. And the third thing today is that we look at the relation between community development and the idea of a community movement. Um, and uh, I think we already have a community movement in Wales in a sense, but it's informal. Um, the thing that we're doing today is part of a movement in, in a sense. Um, but in the third session, we'll talk about formalizing this community idea of a community movement. So those are the three things. Um, as I've said, we've, I've sent out material, um, so um, we'll cover most of those. The first material I sent you, um, and it was coded by me anyway, as 3A2, was key words. And that was taken out of a book by Raymond Williams um, called Key Words. And he deals with the uh, question of um, what is community. Um, and out of that, maybe we don't need it now, um, but you've got it to look at if you uh, need to look at it again. Um, I think for me, the, the essence of what he's saying is that um, there's a whole complexity of meanings to community. Um, that also the meaning of community changes over time. It's really good the way he traces the way in which um, community changes its meaning. Um, and also, it has a variety of meanings. Originally, the word society was used to refer to the local. But as the state grew, this is in more in the history of England, um, as the state grew, there was a need for a word to describe the social relations um, of the whole country, distinct from the relations of the state, of the government. So the word society changed in English. So it went from the local to the national. So you talk about the national society. But that left a gap then that you needed some sort of word to describe the local society. And that's where the word community came in in English. And in a way, the interview just traces the way that process happened. Um, you might ask, well, why do I go to all this bother about uh, the history of words? But I think they're indicative of something a bit deeper. Also, in uh, the definition, or the treatment of the word um, community. Raymond Williams talks about the difference between a local community, more or less a geographical community, but also a community of interest. And I think we're fairly familiar with that. You know, um, the deaf community, the gay community, uh, all there are community of interest as well as geographic, geographical community. And people even talk of the international community. Um, that is, it's a, a very elastic sort of word. Also, an element of community has been used, I think, in socialist thought over the years. Um, certainly, the um, French socialists um, of the 18th, 19th uh, century, that period of the French Revolution, and what have you, they, they had ideas about radical communities, different communities, where there would be common ownership of democracy, and so on and so forth. And those ideas were also picked up by uh, people in other parts of the world, including Robert Owen, uh, who was a Welshman, um, who established alternative communities in places like New Lanark, um, 
And interestingly, um, Robert Owen is a really important um, person and a associated with a really important set of ideas across the world. I came across the Robert Owen Society in Japan not long ago, um, whereas in Wales we've not really given him maybe the due attention they deserve. And then the other two elements in that uh, treatment by Raymond Williams is the word, word community. He touches on community politics, and that tends to be a politics which is more to do with direct action, uh, that, that sort of um, uh, politics. And I think the final thing to say about Raymond Williams' treatment of the word community is it's a rare, really, in that it's a word that everybody uses in a sort of positive way. Um, it's always a warm word. It's not a word um, that carries uh, negative vibes. That maybe is its strength, but also its weakness, and it can be so general. So those are, I think, the main points out of that definition of community. If we move to the next um, attachment, um, the one I sent, I think, in both languages, I think, on community, nation, and state. And again, if you forgive me for being a bit linguistic, but there is uh, a reason for this. If we follow what happened to the words society and community in Welsh, and contrast that to what happened uh, in English, um, or certainly in England, um, then you will s that there are important um, deep lying um, ideas associated with that. Welsh follows the English uh, pattern in that the word um, society um, went from the local to the national in English in, in from the 17th to 18th century on. In Welsh, it happened a lot later. Um, for example, for my mother's generation, or my parents' generation, um, she would still use the word in Welsh, uh, which is equivalent, well, was an equivalent to society. Um, she would still use that. Her description would be, oh, so and so, she's a really good person for her kambithas. And I kambithas, she, she contributes to her kambithas. Uh, but by now, um, somebody of my generation would talk about well, that person being good um, for her community, the Uchamined. But the word Kamined in Welsh doesn't really appear until the 1960s. Before then, um, the word society was used. But why, why go to all this bother with these words? But it does reflect something really deeper and far more important. Um, but because Wales didn't have really its own state, um, there wasn't really a need um, for the process to happen in England of the word society going from the local to the national, because there wasn't a national state in Wales. Really, we've had some sort of a bit of a state fairly recently, a, a devolved government and what have you, so it's still not a whole state. Um, so the process only happens in Wales a lot later, that there is a need for uh, a word to fill in the gap um, when the word can be that in Wales moves to a to refer to the, na to the, to the national society, um, then there's a, a gap where you need the word community to refer to the local. But that also reflects something else, um, and that is that um, what happens is that um, the word nation becomes associated with society and the state in England, as it tends to do in other major European countries. That is, you have a nation state in Germany, in France, in Spain, later in Italy. But in Wales, the nation doesn't have a state, so, but you still have a nation. So what sort of a nation is this that doesn't have a state? What, and how does it survive uh, as a nation? And it survives by being a community and a community of communities. Okay, so the, the Welsh nation becomes really, a, 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 the idea of a nation in Wales becomes a very different idea. It's one that's defined by community rather than state. And it's only relatively recently that the idea of the state becomes added on to the idea of community. And I think that's really important. It's really important for us, uh, for um, 
facilitate the, the field of community, community development. It's also um, really important, generally politically in Wales, about the idea of our identity and of our politics. Um, and sometimes, you know, people talk about the Welsh identity. I, I don't understand it. I think we have Welsh identities. Um, and why not have um, a, a whole flowering of different identities under some sort of community umbrella? Um, so that I think is quite important in itself. Is that okay? Uh, it, it tells us something about the relationship between community, nation, and state. Um, if we then move so, to so in, can I can I ask? Um, I was I was trying to find the document. I did find it in the end, but there's so many. That I think the sharing is probably more off-putting than, uh, yeah, okay, than not. Fine. But yeah. but I, having read the documents before, um, and you haven't paid me to say this, it is it is worth looking at the documents. I know there's a lot, quite a few of them, just to, to capture some of that that meaning. Um, and as a as a Welsh learner, one of the reasons I have learnt Welsh is to try and understand some of those etymological issues. But that, that you know, so I learned as a as an English speaker that words like hiraith and kamined have different sorts of have connotations that mm -hmm. as an English monoglot I didn't really realise. Mm -hmm. Um and um I think when you talk about identities as well, there's something around those of us who've come into the twenty percent who speak some Welsh, um <laughs> You know, sometimes there's been such strong identification in some people's minds with certain cultural and linguistic characteristics that some people have felt somewhat marginalised who've always been in Wales. Um, and there's a sort of a, a challenge there. Um, there we are, that's just a, but yeah. yeah. But, but it, it's a really important uh, factor, isn't it? Because, you know, if you're creating a modern Wales, then that must be a modern world that allows a, a, a host of identities uh, of people to feel comfortable. Um, he's died recently, but I had a really good friend in um, the old Tiger Bay in Cardiff, and he used to describe himself as an Afro Celt, yeah, but a Welsh Afro Celt, yeah. So, um, and uh, he had a lovely um, Caribbean accent as well. And he, he would talk, You can tell you how to go down your tongue in there. But that's part of a, a mixture of identities. Uh, if we move to a um, little bit about what is community development, again, this has been used in different ways. Sometimes it's been used um, in what you could describe as rather an oppressive or oppressive way. Certainly, sort of part of the things that the British states did um, as um, colonies uh, or ex-colonies gained independence, they tended to um, leave a sort of legacy of community development as some sort of a, a way of um, bridging um, the period between um, London control and um, actual colonial sort of uh, self-government. Um, but quite often that form of community development was geared really uh, as an advantage to economic interests in the West rather than the real economic interests of those ex-colonies. So in Certainly in the 1950s, there was a, um, a dirty sort of element to the whole term community development, and that reappears at times, okay? Um, and about 15 years ago, I, I couldn't believe it, there were adverts for community development workers, um, some in Britain, uh, but in other parts of the world, offering really um, big wages, you know, sort of 50,000 a year to be a community development worker. Um, but when I investigated this, it really, this was money from the CIA. Um, um, and that they wanted to use community development to sort of um, placate um, people with radical ideas in other parts of the world. So we, beware of the whole time. Everything which seems good, um, uh, it can be used in, in other ways as well. But generally, when we talk about community development, uh, modern community development in uh, this part of the world. We're talking about of people working together to change things um, and there are several definitions along those lines. It usually involves intervention, uh, a degree of intervention by paid workers, uh, by paid community development workers, um, and because of the concern with change, community development is unavoidably political. I mean, in a sense, everything is political, but um, 
But there's the worst sort of politics is to say something isn't political. Um, that is a sort of a, a denial of um, the real nature of uh, politics or the real nature of community development. Um, and at times, governments can find community development challenging. Um, local governments can find us sometimes challenging. Um, national government can at times find community development challenging. Um, it was instrumental. Um, there was a time Leicester had a really progressive community development, um, uh, but once the Thatcher government came in, they actually stopped all the funding because they were getting concerned that that community development was becoming a bit too flat. So there's always that sort of um, um, question of attention between government and community development. Um, Sometimes it's a bit of a cat and mouse sort of affair. Um, that um, government wants to use community development to um, sort of further its own sort of policies, which at times is fine, um, most of the time is fine. Um, but um, it doesn't all want to lose too much power. So there's always a bit of a power struggle. We see the local government um, um, and community development. So if we're just aware of those sort of tensions, all time. I think that would be enough on uh, the whole idea of community development. The values and principles, I, I've, because I've sent you these as copies, and um, just to reiterate really, all the material I sent you, I, I know it looks a bit excessive, but it's there really as reference, um, and it saves you sort of spending time looking at libraries and on the web and what have you. Um, so use them as you need to. Um, but the values and principles, I'll go through fairly quickly, but they, they're well described, I think, in the material I, I sent you, I'm just taking from someone else. Um, and there are six I sort of factors, which I think it was community development company that um, put these together. Um, social justice, that it is about equal and fair society, um, promoting community and human rights, and challenging oppression. That's part of our uh, values and principles. Secondly, self-determination, that groups identifying shared issues upon which they can act collectively. That is, people coming together to act. Thirdly, working and learning together, um, valuing, sharing a variety of skills, knowledge, experience within communities to cause changes. And when you see that working really well, you know, when we, when we work together, um, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. You know, I might have some skills, somebody else might have some skills, some knowledge, and what have you. Um, if we're not competing against one another but working together, that can be really powerful. Um, fourthly, sustainability is about uh, supporting communities and maintaining uh, the links uh, and maintaining uh, a development which is sustainable. Sustainable environmentally, but also economically and culturally. It's about participation. Um, it's the right for all to be involved in change. The idea is that this is not about the political, but um, it's about including particularly the people which tend to be marginalised. And sixth, it's a reflective practice, people learning from collective and individual experience to inform future action. But it's a thinking person's um, feel that what we do is it's all about experience and learning. And then also, I think Community Development Cymru recognised six key components of community development. Um, firstly, that it's community-led. Obviously, people in their communities know that community best. So community development aims to build on their expertise. More than informing or consulting, and beyond inviting participation, it's an agenda set by others. No, it's about the community leading. For the community development worker, it's about trusting the community. And that's quite often where that friction between, say, local government and um, community develop developers happens. Who trusts the community? Who um, is willing to share power? Secondly, uh, as a key component of community development, it includes all parts of the community. So communities are diverse, um, so community development tries to remove barriers to participation, to overcome marginalisation of some people. Barriers might include skills, they might include access to um, 
the internet, uh, confidence, um, but practical things as well as the internet and whatever you might be, the lack of who we transport, um, skills. But quite often it's about uh, confidence and about um, feeling welcome uh, into some sort of organisation. Um, there are also other things, obviously, like um, people with deaf, questions of uh, vision, questions of hearing, and so, so forth. Quite practical things which need integration and uh, so on. Thirdly, changes, it changes the balance of power. Um, I, you hear people sometimes talking about, um, oh, we, um, we are about to empower communities. And in a way, linguistically, it doesn't make sense. Um, um, whoever, um, it's something you do yourself. Um, empowerment is something that you do for yourself. The community empowers itself. Nobody can empower you um, from the outside. Um, but outside organizations and community developed workers can make a commitment to facilitate the, the empowerment of the community. We are ultimately facilitators of change. Um, so we can promote participative democracy, which can complement representative democracy. You know, there's a, a tendency generally to talk of democracy and limit it just to representative democracy, that is to elections. Um, but in a way, the democracy is a lot wider than that. Um, some of us who have been involved in various different organisations have been involved in voting and what have you. Um, if you're a member of a trade union, for example, or um, various organisations where there is an element of democracy. Um, but this is a democracy which is participative as opposed to representative. Yeah. And there are arguments why uh, really our society should be a lot more democratic, but uh, democracy should spread. Um, much further than it does at the moment. Um, and then uh, um, that changing changes in the balance of power, uh, it fosters um, a sustainable uh, society um, in which all members are able to freely express their concerns. All this is important to community development. Um, that all members of society understand local, national, and global issues. Well, that at least is the aim. Um, that it, uh, all the issues that impact on their concerns um, and things that influence matters important to them. Local strategies enabling people to plan their community and lives. Um, and then here I'd uh, quote from. Um, I've lost some of the pictures, but presumably people can still hear me, yeah? Um, yeah, okay, thanks, Jim. Um, but I'll uh, quote from Paolo Friere. Um, Paolo Friere is a really important um, person, um, who, a Brazilian, um, who really rethought a lot about education, um, and particularly education education and community. And he talks of, uh, I quote from him, washing one's hands of the conflict between the powerful and the powerless means to side with the powerful. Yeah, I'll read that again. Washing one's hands of the conflict between the powerful and the powerless means to side with the powerful, not to be neutral. Yeah. That is, there isn't a fence you can sit on. And I, I think a lot of the things that have emerged over the last few weeks or days uh, of the um, Black Lives Movement, um, that, um, you've seen the same thing sort of reflected. They're sort of saying that there isn't a fence you can sit on. Either um, you're against racism, um, or if you're, not, if you're quiet and you're not saying anything, if you don't speak out, it's as, uh, it's as, good, it's as bad as um, supporting uh, the continuation of racism. Um, the fourth key part, it takes time. Uh, this isn't a quick fix. Community development isn't a quick fix thing. It's not a process. Uh, it, sorry, it is a process, not a pro project. Um, and so much of government thinking about community development tends to go from project to project. Whereas if you're working in a community, you see it more and more as a 
a process, something which is ultimately about cultural change in that community. But that doesn't come about by uh, um, one little uh, project, some sort of short-term funding of a project. It's an ongoing cultural change. Um, and we've seen so many examples that if, for example, governments or other organisations tend to do something in a community without the community being involved, then the respect for that um, project that isn't the same. You know, even simple things. Um, I remember plant a tree in 73, and all the kids were planting a tree, what have you. Those trees were respected, yeah? Um, but if some organization, if the Forestry Commission came along and planted all the trees, um, half of them would have been abandoned. That's rather a crude example, but I'm just um, trying to illustrate the point of um, the involvement of the community in particular actions, in particular changes. And importantly, um, community development is a learning process. It's active, it's community developed activity results in individual and collective learning um, for all who are involved. Um, and it's informal learning, it's experiential learning, it's collective learning. It's quite different to much of the standard learning of the education system. Action and reflection underpinned by values and principles. And again, I quote from Paolo Freire. He says, education either functions as an instrument which is used to facilitate integration into the logic of the present and brings about conformity, or, or education becomes the practice of freedom, the means by which men and women deal critically and creatively with reality and learn how to engage in the transformation of their world. Yeah. Again, there's no fence to sit on. Either that education is about conformity or it's about uh, change. And the last uh, in the, um, these sort of key elements, it's a holistic process, uh, an eclectic process, an integrated process. A community development approach recognizes that all issues in the community are linked the environmental, the economic, the social, the cultural, the educational. In addition, community development activity recognises um, the local, regional, national and international context which community development is part of. Um, okay, I suppose the easy strap line is um, think global, act local. Um, but we might be acting locally, but it's not parochial, it's part of something uh, far wider. Um, so, in contrast, there's a tendency for governments to operate in silos. Um, I think we're all aware of the struggle sometimes to get uh, local government and central government to think across um, environment and uh, economy, for example. Um, whereas community development is very much about the links, the horizontal links, that is, the links within the community, the links between um, the environmental, economic, social within the community, if you like, the practical things, the links between where you put the street lighting, where you put the schools, where you put the um, paths, where you put uh, all, all these things which make sense uh, as horizontal linkages within the community. You can also think of the sort of vertical links, the relationship between the local, the regional, the national, and the international. That is, um, we have to think in those two uh, directions. Um, and for us, um, a way of dealing with this is networking the whole time. We can network on a local level, network between communities, um, network across uh, communities, across a nation, um, and network internationally. And I'll come to this sort of, sort of whole idea of networking um, when we come to talk of a movement. But can I move uh, next to um, the material I sent from the New Economics um, Foundation, um, material called The Great Transition. And this is to do with more with to do with the whole idea of global change. And I don't want to spend too much time on it because I think the notes themselves are they're quite 
the quite well written sort of account from the EU Economic Foundation. This was something that they produced in 2010. Um, but I'll just touch on some of the ideas. Um, but these are, this is looking at the thing uh, uh, globally. Um, really, more and more people are, are beginning to sort of realize there are planetary limits to, um, to, um, to growth. Um, there's untenable inequality in the world, um, growing economic instability, um, a breakdown in the relation between more and better. Um, and the only way to overcome these systemic problems is through a set of solutions that themselves address the whole. Um, and we've got to see these things in their entirety. And I'll just touch upon it, but the new Economics Foundation um, document I sent, um, and you can find this on, um, uh, digitally anyway, um, it sort of argues, okay, the financial crisis of 2008 ex really exposed um, the weaknesses of the whole sort of world economy. Um, and despite sort of 10 years of austerity, what have you, they return to some sort of uh, economic orthodoxy. It never really solved the problem, um, which is quite fundamental, um, of how you can, how, how, how can you um, have economic growth that is not um, damaging environmentally. And the sort of economic growth that we've had has created more and more inequality. I, I think we, we touched upon that in the second, from the first and second session. And really then the New Economics Foundation, it sort of um, proposes all sorts of answers to these sort of major problems. Um, and it does so in their own series of headings. And I'll just touch on the headings really. Um, but it says, a great revaluing. Um, remember this is called the Great Transition and there are several other greats within the Great Transition. The Great Revaluing is really sort of saying, well, um, we should not look just at the cost and the price of things, but we should look at the value of things. So that things which are good should be cheap and things which are bad should be expensive. You know that the market can be used by that, but like intervening in the market in that way. There's a need for the great redistribution that we've been going um, for a period. I think we, we saw this in one of the earlier sessions. I think the period between the end of the Second World War and maybe the middle of the 1970s did see at least um, a period where um, the poorest, in at least the developing world, um, were actually getting better off. Um, more or less, everybody was twice as well off in 1975 as they were in. Um, 1950. Yeah. Um, but remember, that still um, is a, a, a very unequal society. But at least there was something in the argument of uh, trickle down that the rich were getting richer. But at least um, if the if the big boats were rising with the tide, so were the little uh, chronicles as well. Yeah. But after the middle of the 1970s, um, it's gone the other way. The poor have been getting poorer and the rich have been getting richer and the inequality has become greater. So there's a need for a great redistribution. Um, they talk about the great rebalancing and that's really about using the market um, because in some ways the market is efficient but that you apply values to the market that um, you know Aston Martins and uh, Leisure cruisers should be expensive, whereas bread should be cheap. Yeah, um, that's a very, very simple uh, conveying of the idea. And then the idea of um, what they call the great economic irrigation a financial system that actually serves communities, that actually serves the people, rather than um, serves uh, just crude uh, profit and money. Yeah, um, and then Finally, the idea that they have of the great interdependence. But really, we live in a world which is more and more globalized. Um, at best, globalization is internationalization, which is the sharing of proteins and what have you. There's a lot of positive things, but there is also negative things. But you can turn that sort of relationship between the local community, the 
regional community, the national community, and the, and the international community into something uh, quite different and uh, possible. So it's not about being parochial, it's not about being uh, isolated, um, it's about um, a great interdependence. Um, if I then turn to the next attachment, which was 3C2, which is something um, I picked up quite recently, which is something which uh, the Welsh Government has um, started to consult on, which is a future regional policy for Wales. Um, and it's quite a brief document. And um, it says that the Welsh Government is committed to community-led development approach. Okay. Traditionally, the regional almost there's a, a split in the, between regional development and community development in Wales and for that matter throughout the UK. Um, almost you could say a typical regional development person would be male in a suit um, with shiny shoes yeah? um, and a degree in economics. Yeah? Um, whereas a community development person would more often than not be female, um, would not have shiny shoes but would probably have sandals um, and would have a degree, if a degree at all, in sociology or something similar. I mean, that was that's an oversimplification, obviously, but there was a huge element of truth in that. Okay, um, and a tragic tragedy, really, that community and regional development were so um, separate in that way. It's heartening to see Welsh government talking about now regional policy in terms of um, community led. Um, and they make five points in that um, consult consultation document um, that really regional development should be about local area based approach. Okay, that's happening. Um, it should be about partnership, about participation, and about co production. Um, not, not the separation between the public, private, and the community sector as has been deviled so much in the past. Thirdly, it should be integrated uh, horizontally and vertical. You know, we're just talking about horizontal and vertical. It should be innovative and it should be about networking. So it's very heartening to see a document from the Welsh Government really using our language, the language of community uh, development in this positive way. Um, there's one sort of maybe highly indicative uh, sentence in the document that says, this is a working document not government policy. Okay, and why I point that out is there is obviously within Wales now quite a dialectic, quite a conflict about regional development, which influences community development. You can almost personify it in the people which are part of uh, government. I don't know what the figures are now, but I remember looking at the figures maybe ten. 12 years ago, and regional economic development in Wales. 85% of the expenditure went on attracting multinational corporations to come to Wales or to stay in Wales. Yeah. Rightly or wrongly, that was the main thrust of economic regional development. And I don't think it's changed all that much. Um, which Welsh government is still pouring money into the coffers of Aston Martin, for example. Um, and you know, you can make an argument well, does the world need after that? Can we really have uh, an environmental policy? Um, can we have um, consideration of what is supposed to be uh, recognized as an uh, economic and uh, environmental crisis? Do we at the same time um, build motor cars that uh, are causing lots of fuel and so on and so forth? Um, that, that is a debate in itself. But the real question is, if you had a change in regional policy where more of the resources went towards the foundational economy and towards community development, that is um, quite an exciting possible development in Wales. And we, I don't think we're far away. We, we, the government, national government in Wales, the door is ajar. To that, to that way of thinking, as is evident from this document. But it's obviously a document which some elements in government are pushing, but it's not yet government policy. And that will bring me to, I think, the last point I want to make, 
which is um, something I sent as an attachment um, about a community movement for Wales. And I think because all this is political and it's about power, as I said earlier, I think we already have a community movement. What we're doing today is part of a movement because people from different parts of Wales are talking to one another. The whole Fethi Glow uh, Ken Glad project um, is bringing people together. But this is happening in all sorts of ways. But, um, you know, if I look, think of my own area, within Cumbi Bro, in our own area, we've got now 15 social enterprises network. Uh, we're networking, we, we have been working quite a bit with the Upland Valley and the Nantua Valley, but that's networked a bit more formally now through um, the Foundation Economy Challenge Fund and setting up one company, Dolan, Dolan which um, links the, more formally the three communities. Um, there's work going on looking at uh, the relationship uh, between um, different social enterprise and Anglesey, they're forming a network called Throw um, and And there is, there is already some sort of a movement in Wales, um, but it's bits and pieces of a jigsaw here, there and everywhere. And um, what we've decided to do, um, this is following a lot of talking, and uh, particularly Kerry Cunnington and I, we spent quite a lot of time um, going to different parts of Wales. To talk about what we've been doing in Blofastinia, for example. I think that, that is a model that is worth talking about. But other communities, they can copy, but they can look at, um, see what they think is valuable in it, um, and they can adapt it to their own circumstances. Um, but if you put all these sorts of bits and pieces that are happening in Wales, and they're not only happening in communities, but happening in local government, within local government, the debates within local government, Obviously, the debates within um, the Welsh government uh, around regional policy. What we're so saying is, we need to bring these together. Um, we need to formalise this movement a little bit. And why I've been stressing this is that I did have the privilege um, of going to Sweden some time ago um, to their sort of meeting of the Parliament of Communities. Um, or the community parliament in Sweden. And basically what happened in Sweden was, I think it was in the 1980s, um, that particularly rural areas in community, uh, rural areas in Sweden, came to the conclusion, well, 80% of the population of Sweden live in that sort of southern strip. Um, and that's really where the power is. Um, that the rural areas to the uh, north decide what Government isn't going to listen to us um, unless we make our voices heard. So the communities got together, and each community, more or less every community, has a voice. And they've come together with a national organization, um, a, a community of community developers, if you like. Um, of, uh, and they now are really powerful. And they hold a parliament every two years. I think it might be annually really now, but it used to be every two years. And that is a really powerful force. And the state, the government, asks whether they can attend the parliament of communities. And if the parliament of communities feel like it, they uh, allow the government. That is, it changes the relation, the power relationship to a certain extent. And by now, it, it was initially rural communities, but by now, the urban communities in Sweden are also part of the whole thing. So there is a model there um, where uh, in Sweden, communities have their voice has been a lot more powerful because they've organised as a movement. And I think this is an opportune time in Wales to do this. Um, I did um, come across a quote from uh, Raymond Williams. Um, and um, I think I've included that somewhere. Um, but this is something he wrote, I think it was about in the 1980s. Um, and it, this is what he said. Ideally, a new movement comes out of new ideas being specified in particular places. Then there may be a model being expressed which is adaptable to the interests of other places and scales of operation. These can be ideas relating to long or short-term real interests and the policies which express them. It is perfectly clear that ideas have to federate. It's in the nature of the analysis. 
The difficulty comes not least because of the existence of the old Labour Party nationalism, the tradition of metropolitan centralism, and its tradition of short-term electoral politics, and leadership geared to precisely that. It is difficult to produce ideas for a single place, which needs lots of people with skills being brought together. This is very difficult, especially as intellectuals will work in campaigns such as disarmament, the ecological movement, and on questions of the economy. But there is little bringing together of these energies. It would happen more quickly, this bringing together, if it happened in a place. That is, um, it's really important that the sort of model that we are looking at, where now it's um, our own experience in um, Broadcast in Europe, it's been repeated in other places in Wales but across the world, where communities are beginning to, um, to empower themselves to feel that power. And I think what we have locally here now is this sort of model of community development, which is integrated um, because it's environmental, economic, um, horizontal integration. It's about cultural change, about people in the community sort of um, beginning to think what we, we can do a lot more for ourselves. We, can, we, we have power, we can begin to do things of, um, to do more for ourselves. To build on a tradition that exists in Wales, um, I, I touched upon this in um, one of the other sessions. If you look at the history of Wales, we have a long tradition of community uh, involvement, of communities doing things for themselves. Um, from the middle of the 19th century, where um, Oddly enough, um, Wales was probably the country in Europe which had the highest percentage of people that could read and write. Um, and that was in Welsh, and that was done despite a state that was really hostile to the language, but it was done through community effort. If you think of all the um, places of worship that were built, um, if you think of um, the workers' institutes and the various sorts, of all the sports clubs, or, and that tradition still exists of communities doing things for themselves. But, if you begin to think of that allied to a government that would be pushed, think of back to that triangle of capital, community, and um, government. And if there was a movement in Wales that was pushing the whole time for government to act more and more um, in the interest of community, um, and, to, and for communities to increasingly empower, then I think that sense an exciting way forward in Wales. And that's why I think we need some sort of a movement. So having talked to people um, in all parts of Wales for quite some time now, um, too many people have you know, taken it upon itself um, just to facilitate the launch of community movements coming in. Um, on the 1st of May next year, um, seems an appropriate day on International Labour Day to uh, launch such a thing. But in a way, um, that will just be the official launching of the thing. The work to create that moment has to start, well, it has already started in an informal way, but it needs to be done in a more sort of uh, organised way. And that will be happening over the next few months. So we will be coming back to people and asking, um, are you supportive of this? Can you play a part in this? Um, so it has to be a democratic organisation it has to be an organisation which is very open um, and one which can do a lot of good in Wales because I, I see its aims as, okay, sharing experience, which is extremely valuable, sharing knowledge, which is extremely valuable, but also it can be um, valuable in that it can be a power base to influence policy in uh, Wales. Um, and as I said, I think that door is a jar, government door is a jar in Wales. And despite the horrible aspects of what's been happening with this, um, uh, I call it COVID, it's in it now, uh, this COVID-19, um, it has sort of shaken things uh, quite a bit. And it's an opportunity to look at how we do things differently um, when, um, Things begin to um, well, 
where we begin to be less concerned about our health, um, uh, how we we don't return to what was called normality, but that we create something different. I think that's more or less what I have to say. Um, I, maybe I'll finish with, a, with one other quote from Raymond Williams. I'm talking about Raymond Williams because next year it, it will be 100 years since his birth. So there are a few people trying to do something to um, celebrate his life and his contribution. And he did say, I think this was in 1983, Radical and communal wills, that is to say, will be real to the extent that it develops in plan and practice new forms of cooperative work and communal socialism, new kinds of educational and cultural collectives, rather than by what happens to labour or the nationalist thought. Yeah, that is, what happens to participative democracy um, is really important, and that is what community development is ultimately about. It's about, it's about changing things um, quite fundamentally and we're not alone. Um, I look at community movements in California for example, so much uh, really interesting good stuff going on. Kurdistan, um, so much interesting stuff. We're part of changing the world maybe from the bottom up to the community side. I hope that makes some sort of sense to everybody. I'm uh, sorry, I sound a little bit like a, a rather poor non-conformist preacher towards the end. I was influenced by those in my youth. But yeah. Not all bad either. Oh, yeah. Do you have so when well, I, as a non-conformist preacher, I, your technique is fantastic. Um, thank, thank you very much. I wonder whether people have got some 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 questions. Or comments? I just say D also in um Nishi um a bostior team again the day well I'll grimmy or some bad and with all the session ma and I see this grivy of the godfather or that's what you can do in him. Yeah, well <laughs> godfathers and godfathers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Thanks anyway. Yeah. Um oh just to comment, um the main reason why I wanted the team to attend today was so that they feel um, that they um, are part of this movement as well. Um, so the Excel win, um, and it is a, a movement not just for our own community but also um, a global movement. So um, the word silos has been mentioned a few times this morning. And sometimes you can be so focused on what's happening in your own community, uh, it's important to to raise your head and listen to um, stories from other communities, but also to see your contribution to a, a, a wider global movement. Um, and yeah, just the yourself. <laughs> just in question back, um, just even though it's the points the um um uh ne trio sicker high but um petha da and ra da bo petha drug and and cruz of the brass um sit with teen sit do we uh at all can knock in a um melvin and senate senate dion sit at the hino sky switch with the hin incentivize your bubble he just cray aston martins with a so i still what you would do at all yeah, there's a question whether, you know, our money, government money, should go to subsidise Aston Martins in the first place, yeah. Um, then there's questions, I mean, we, have, we do have a tax system, um, which to a certain extent does um, differentiate between good and bad, doesn't it? I mean, there's a lot of tax on cigarettes, for example, and there's quite a lot of tax on um, um, alcohol and, and stuff like that. And, the, the talk of it doing more and more of that. So you can extend that, but you can extend it to things which are environmentally uh, damaging. Yeah? Um, but um, you, you know, it's not a great change to, to, to um, have different prices for cars that uh, pollute to different levels and what have you. Yeah? Um, it's, it's just an extension of that thinking, really. Yeah? But I think it, it's the difference between value and price yeah hmm. 
that we think about that the whole time. It, it's an interesting, I was going to ask about Aston Martin as it's just down the road. Um, yeah. uh, Cause one of the things that they're looking at is going into the battery technology. And one of the things that may well bring the battery technology people into the Vale of Glamorgan and not into Coventry um, mm. is Aston Martin. So there's a sort of complex, uh, having just looked, whilst you were looking, I was looking to see what, what would it cost me to get an Aston Martin? It's 180,000 pounds. So obviously it's a snip. Um, but the, the, it is a Euro 6 engine. So actually, compared to many um, diesel, old diesel vehicles in Wales, it'll yeah. be far more efficient and far less polluting. Now, that's not to say that we should go and buy an Aston Martin because there's lots of other issues around it. But the, the car parts industry in South Wales um, is under huge threat with Ford shifting, Bosch having gone. Um, but the 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 um, there's a huge engineering plant going in at Newport. There's going to be a test place for um, the new electric trains um, in um, uh, another part of South Wales as well. So there's I think there's a bit of a push and pull yeah. sometimes with these things. And whether it's a transitional thing, I I don't know. Um, I the the one of the a couple of other questions. So one was, so how will and community movement Cymru succeed where community development Cymru failed? Yeah, okay. Uh, I think we've learned quite a lot of lessons from community development Cymru. Um, and I was involved with that right from the beginning. And community development Cymru did succeed in some ways. It, 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 it was a real help to bring the people together. Uh, um, and it did quite a bit of good. I think what tended to happen with it was that it, it it seemed to be confined to um, what you could almost call professionals in the field of community development, people working, paid yeah. working in, in, in the field. Whereas I think a community movement going to be, has to be, yes, it has to include uh, those um, who are paid workers in the field, but it importantly has to represent communities. Yeah? Uh, and that must be the really important voice in it. And also, I think. It has to somehow or other be independent of government. Mm -hmm. um, I think Community Development Company became too close to government with all the best intentions, but it then tends to be um, dependent on government. And then, if you're dependent on government for your next lot of finance, you're not quite so you know, willing to be critical. And I think in Wales, we've got too much of that. It, it, we're all quite nice together, but mm -hmm. we're, we're a little bit scared of making contingencies. Even, the, even if those criticisms are wrong, it, it means there's a debate. But uh, exactly what, we've, you know, what I've said about Aston Martin creates a debate. I might, have been, I might be wrong there, and we might have an alternative, but at least we're talking about it and how to, yeah. how to that debate can change. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I agree entirely, Simon, because I, I, one of the concerns I have is that quite often, and this is one I don't know whether people think about the WCVA, um, but sometimes that organisation seems to me both gamekeeper and poacher. Yeah, yeah. So it's been delivering big grant money from Europe and from Welsh government and other things and, and, and doing the compliance, a whole lot of compliance offices, but also meant to be a representative body for those of us in the third sector. And, it, and, it, uh, and so that when there was a paper uh, issued by Sarah about four years ago in, in partnership with Chris Johns and um, Victoria Winkler from the Bevan Foundation, um, Sarah was summoned very swiftly to the WCVA office to explain herself. <laughs> and I thought, my gosh, you know, yeah. someone who's been in that sector for 35 years and, 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 and very well read and, and, and very connected, but that there was a sense in which the um, received wisdom, I might have to edit this out my recording, the received yeah. wisdom was, was, was sort of um, being challenged and that challenge, what to some people, to be fair, it was sort of sorted out eventually, but wasn't acceptable. And I thought, wow, this is interesting. So where do we, where do we have this conversation then openly and freely? Um, which, of course, links to that Freira quote, doesn't it, about conformity and, and sort of freedom to express. I don't know about you, but I think a lot of our education has become about conformity and, and fitting in and not creating people who are going to ask questions. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, certainly, the, I've seen huge changes in the education system. Uh, um, 
and we, we desperately need a community education you now. Uh, we need a, a, a different education. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I was thinking when you were saying, Jim, you know, one of the things that really irks me, if you look at all the European Union um, funding that came to Wales, um, and really, I looked at some of it and I compared and, and talked to some of the people in Brussels as well. And what the people in Brussels said to me was, Wales, with the European Union funding, had the best documentation. The bureaucracy was great in Wales. The worst bureaucracy was Ireland, uh, the Irish Republic. But the greatest changes and benefit came from Ireland, and the least changes came from Wales. Um, but you, you, did, you almost dare not say these things. Yeah? Um, no. but, but if we, that's why we need a, a movement that is sufficiently independent and sufficiently brave to say these things. And if we say them collectively, um, then we, 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 we're not going to be knocked off one by one. <laughs> um, it, it's classic trade union stuff, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Together with yeah. yeah. And any other questions or comments? Just on a media one, media can at least all. Um we seen Rag well with one on and with the other give our uh curf ni seven letter val me, seven letter coming at all. Um maybe some of our ready bow because then in so on lots to dance all and lean a wish of a sector privat, a husband on ran more buise gone. Um, community and the economy so we know in lleol so or an mitiad cymunedol Cymru fysa hwnna'n agorad hefyd i uh, fusnesa bach Yeah, do you know ma hwn i chi wedi gael ei drafod mewn ffordd yn beth? Ti'n bod um, y, y cwbl ma cwmni bron yn gwneud ydy um, hyrwyddo trafodaeth ar hyn a mae rhaid okay. wedi benderfyniad ar hyn ond dim ond mae rhaid gwyddorion, mae rhaid wedyn more anni dynol a phosi um, yeah. a mae rhaid o mor democratiaid a mor gynhyllol adol a phosi. Yn bersonol, os yn i'n hapus i weld o yn cynnwys yr mediadau cymunedol, ond hefyd yr elfenna yn y gymuned sy'n wedi angori yn y gymuned sy'n cynnwys um, elfenna o sector prifa. Ond os yeah. ni'n fyrd barricade ochr yma i Tesco a gyn y blaen, gyn y blaen. <laughs> And uh, uh, what, what's going to happen over the next few months is that um, we, we, we'll try and engage everybody in a debate about this. So, so the whole framework and the whole vision and the whole aims and the structure of it um, can be debated so that by the 1st of May we will have a clear um, a movement in, in place. But it's only a matter of formalising what we're already doing in a way. Yeah. Yeah? Uh, and those are the better sorts of movements, aren't they? Yes, I think so. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, Jochen uh, and and any anyone else before I uh, <laughs> draw it to a close? Well, th thank you very much, Selwyn. I do appreciate you agreeing to do the sort of third session again for those who are absent and the the fact we didn't get a recording. And obviously the um, the Greater Republic of Ogwen um, in attendance. <laughs> it's been really good to see the rest of you. So I, I, I see a couple of your, your, your the faces from there on a regular basis. Two of you I'll see tomorrow. But um, I, I, I tell you, I, I'm going to have to going to have to make the trip now um, when they allow us, because um, we we actually can't escape sort of the local area like you, technically, um, and. Um, I think uh, one of the positives of the lockdown for the Lechi Glo um network, which we're all a part of, is is that we've actually got to know each other better possibly than we would have done with like four meetings a year, which not all of us would have made. Um, so I think this is, um, and, and, and also having met you, Selwyn, and, and, and listened, it's certainly reinvigorated the reasons why we might be doing what we're doing, which I think is really important. Sometimes just get on the day-to-day -day treadmill of doing stuff, um, and I think having a reason for it is really important. So, uh, uh, um, well, I, I'm, I, I think I'm going to 
do the do the chairman's privilege and say uh, call order and um, and uh, say uh, yeah. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, Bye.